are to watch. Uh, we are now joined in the studio by our Monday regular guest, Conservative commentator, Connor Tomlinson. Uh, how are you, Connor? Oh, well, I appreciate the introduction, at least, Kevin, because otherwise your guests would have been very confused between me and the alpaca in the last segment. I'll, I'll tell you why I was a bit confused. Have a look at uh, the guest on Go that. for it. Yeah. Where's me? Uh... Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Give me that sense. list back now. Yeah. Well, 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 I just wanted to make you mixed up even more. That's okay, why. Connor, or can I call you Sophie? Oh, that well, generally uh, only, neutral. well, only on a Saturday night. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> um, it uh, fits in nicely to the sort of thing we're talking about anyway. We're talking mm. about wokeism. We're going to do gender neutral lose in a little while. Yep. Uh, but uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, Tintin and the cartoon Asterix, a school in Ontario, uh, Ottawa in Canada, has had a massive great book burning of 4,700 books in order to uh, reconcile itself with uh, the native Canadians who live there. Uh, and uh, apparently Tintin in particular and Asterix, the cartoon, are very offensive to uh, native Canadians. And let's hear... Tintin, right now, at his very worst. What a glorious holiday, eh, Snowy? Snowy? Come on, we'll head back to the hotel. I'm hungry as a bear. Well, you can see why they were so offended, can't you? Well, uh, you tell tell a, us about the story. I thought you just said a passing resemblance to me when I was 12 or something, <laughs> and that's why they're all upset. No, so... You're a great guy, but you're no Tintin. Well, well, I had, I had the awful haircut, I will profess. Let's not hope that anyone tracks those photos down, because that'll end my career. Um, yeah, essentially, there was a school board in Canada, Catholic school board, no less, so nothing safe anymore. Mm -hmm. um, 30 different schools burned about 4,700 books, starting in 2019. It was uh, in conjunction with consulting... Uh, what they call the Indigenous, Indigenous Peoples Council of Canada. Um, the hilarious thing about that I'll come on to in a minute because there's a, there's a great thing about their founder which adds a biting bit of irony to this. But as for Tintin, uh, Asterix and Obelisk's sin, they had offensive stereotypical depictions of Native Americans. And what was Tintin's particular crime? Oh, he was trying to take a photo of a Native American man who was sitting in a blanket uh, in a comic book and the Native American man wasn't happy of having a photo snapped. <sighs> I never realised Tintin was such a racist. It's, it's horrendous. It's absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. No wonder they burnt all the books. And uh, Obelisk in the Asterix cartoon, what was his crime? Oh, he was trying to chat up a slightly attractive um, Native American woman, whereas obviously uh, he's a rather large man, so it was, it was uh, misogyny as well thrown in. How terrible. It's absolutely disgusting. Now, uh, let's uh, actually let's stop being quite so sarcastic and let's, <laughs> Me call, never. let's call it like it is. Uh, this is pathetic. This is a school uh, called... Uh, it's in Providence in... Uh, Ontario as I said and uh, they burnt 4,700 books uh, or they removed 4,700 books from the library at 30 schools across this school board and they have been destroyed or are in the process of being destroyed and uh, they uh, said that this was flame purification mm. I mean these idiots the school boards I mean do they not understand that the imagery of burning books is a uh, suspect in the first place mm. and b certainly not something to subject children to watch well i wouldn't uh, suppose people this thick could read the books let alone understand <laughs> history um however it, it's quite disturbing that the stories come up it happened quite a few years ago and this flew under the radar the only reason it recently hit headlines is because the canadian elections are happening and most of the parties, other than Maxime Bernier, who was who was not invited to the debate, um, other than uh, Eric O'Toole, the leader of the Conservative Party, who unequivocally condemned it, he's not condemned vaccine passports, so he's looking a bit weak opposition at the moment, but all the other parties, the, the Greens, the Quebecois, the SDP, and Justin Trudeau himself, being very progressive that he's done black blackface no less than three times, um, <laughs> they all said, well, we wouldn't really have gone about it that way, but you can't condemn Indigenous people's way of uh, expressing rage. And this also comes hot, hot the heels of a bunch of Catholic churches being burned down because of uh, mm -hmm. tensions between the Indigenous people's communities and the Catholic churches. I don't see how you can balkanise um, behaviour that's clearly morally wrong with the destruction of property and the destruction of, of art and culture by race in that way. Clearly, if it's wrong for one person, it's wrong for everybody. Yeah, uh, and, uh, to go back to my point, I mean, the optics of yes. building a bonfire out of books... Mm. 
uh, are not good, are they? No, it definitely conjures up not only the uh, the unfortunate things of the 1930s and what the Soviets did to tons of dissident literature, but also as we spoke quite a while ago about um, the, the comic crusades by the British Communist Party in, in the 30s to 50s over here, they were burning children's comics saying, you're corrupting the youth with American patriotism and depictions of violence, and they had massive comic book burnings in the UK and USA. They've never aged well, not least of all because they've been associated with authoritarianism, but also a sort of strain of anti-intellectualism and, and an impunity to criticism. Yeah, I mean, I always say about this uh, extreme wokery, mm. uh, you know, it, it insults the intelligence. Mm. It really, really does. Uh, and also, you know, 4,700 books, uh, you know, because they found some alleged reference uh, that may offend the native Canadians mm. and Native Americans as well. Uh, what have, You know, these books are probably full of educational uh, content mm. that would be useful for the kids' development. And yet you know, on the altar of their own virtue signalling, they forget all about the kids' uh, academic development. In fact, they throw that on a bonfire and get rid of 4,700 books. It beggars belief, doesn't it? Well, there's two of the books, actually, as well, included, not just one comics. They were the biographies of the man who was a French explorer who named the country. So if you're going to undermine the existence of Canada in and of itself and erase the history of the man who named the country, that's, that's more than ridiculous. But I think it's disingenuous. I don't think it's, it's in the name of uh, advancing progress or children's education, because actually the woman who spearheaded this initiative, um, she's embroiled in a scandal now because she's been brought to public light because it turns out she's got no Native American heritage whatsoever. <laughs> so she's the co-chair of the uh, Indigenous Peoples well, she, Council. So she's making it up. Oh, yeah, we've got a Rachel Dolezal <laughs> situation love those on our hands. They're, they're the best. It's a beautiful grift, yeah. as per usual. <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I want to get your take on uh, something that's uh, sort of emerged well, the last couple of days, really. Uh, good move, I think you'll probably agree, of the government to abandon the plans for the accursed uh, vaccine passports, mm. which would have been illiberal, divisive, mm. wrong basically, and probably bureaucratically impractical. Mm. It probably like would, every government program. Would have, would have caused a complete mess. So that's gone. That's great. And yet they press ahead with plans for government jab squads yeah. to march into schools and inject kids as young as 12 uh, with the COVID vaccine. And if their parents object, as things stand, it looks as if the government's going to say 12-year-olds will be able to overrule their parents and get the jab. Uh, that is a recipe for uh, social unrest and disaster, I would humbly suggest. Yes, I think it's actually the, the reason they've overturned the COVID passports thing, reportedly anyway, obviously there's a bit of contention between Sajid Javid and um, Nazim Zahawi at the moment. I said uh, earlier on Twitter, between Hancock's snogging technique, um, Nazim Zahawi and, and Javid arguing to death about their, their ability to tell lies and Gove's poor dance moves, it's like we're being governed by the Inbetweeners cast. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, would, I would say it's pretty the concerning. The Inbetweeners cast without the laughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the brain cells, cells it government. seems, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it... I'm very concerned about the idea that children can consent whatsoever because placing any sort of moral authority in in, in a child it, it, it's a pretty un, unnervy topic and we it, it ask for example moving the voting age back etc it's not a road we particularly want to go down and it's strange that they're happy to override the the vaccine council on this mm -hmm. and say we're going to take other considerations into account and say we don't want to disrupt children's lives well first of all the only disruption to children's lives would be if you close yeah. schools which is a political yeah. decision and you didn't want to take any science uh, any advice other than supposedly scientific into account with the lockdowns the amount of damage mm -hmm. that did so they're just talking out both sides of their yeah. mouth yeah exactly uh, and you know we, we have to sort of take on board that there, there is actually no medical reason mm. to vaccinate healthy children uh, if it's ever done uh, it, it will be done on the altar of uh, trying to protect older people and vulnerable mm. people that on the basis that the more people you can vaccinate generally uh, the less effective covid will be in ripping through the community uh, but the children do not need it uh, mm. medically because uh, a if they get any symptoms they'll hardly know it uh, a lot of them will get it and won't literally won't know it mm. and none of them will die from it so there's no need to do this and also uh, don't forget that uh, the vaccine has not been tested in the long term mm. by definition so it will be potentially putting kids at risk in the long term when we don't have to chris witty the chief medical officer has come up with this extraordinary reason. He's not able to say medically this is a good idea. So he's, he said that it will be good for kids' mental health and their development. 
what on earth is he talking about? Oh, I'm not particularly sure. It's also not great for kids' mental health to uh, say that sort of some arbiter of disease, like they're walking around like mini bioweapons that you might kill granny, like they have for the last 19, 20 months. Um, it's it's also a strange thing to say that we can... It, it's almost like they're going for a zero-COVID policy, which we know can't happen because, one, the vaccine doesn't stop transmission or infection. It just stops severe death and hospitalisation. And also, it gets progressively less effective as the variants go on, and you're never going to eliminate a virus that has animal reservoirs, mm. um, as, as plenty of your guests have spoken about when speaking about Jerome the Apalka, etc. So it's a it's a very strange underlying presupposition. I think if you if you look at the the, uh, the vaccine contracts with Pfizer from Albania and that the amount of money that's going into this, I personally think it's about yeah. the money. It's a, it's expanding the customer base as fast as possible. First it was booster jabs, now it's children. If they can get you continually taking the uptakes, they can get money for yeah. their mates. Well, that may be the case, but to here's. Uh, my prediction, and I can't believe the government haven't thought about this, uh, if it becomes the situation that parents uh, mm. are worried about giving their kids this vaccination because it's not medical necessary, medically necessary, uh, and they decide uh, on balance, no, and I think the majority will decide that, yep. by the way, uh, and the state says, no, 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 we're going to ask your kids, mm. and it's nothing to do with you, they can overrule you, uh, there, there is going to be hell to pay. It's the catalyst for civil unrest. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, and I can't imagine they won't have to rail back from this somehow. Otherwise, uh, in the words of the song, there may be trouble ahead. Connor, always a pleasure. Connor Thank Tomlinson, there, Conservative commentator, will be in again. Same time, same place next week. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan, and this is Talk Radio.